Hello friends, this is a Yamaha Natural Sound AV receiver, model RX-A670. I just picked this up at a thrift store for the amazing low price of $6. Now while I was in the store, I did a quick check. And these are selling online for over $150. So if this works, I've made a major score as far as a resale value goes. If it doesn't work, I can certainly get $6 worth of fun out of it by uh, testing it and taking it apart. Now I did this kind of thing on another AV receiver recently that I got at a uh, estate sale that was actually given to me for free. This is a newer and more deluxe version. It has a lot of inputs and outputs on it, and in particular, something that I haven't seen is it looks like a 4 to 1 HDMI switch built in here, as well as analog inputs and outputs. Uh, five channels. Here's a diagram that shows the hookup concept of surround speakers. Even got a network port, I didn't realize that. This may even have built-in Wi-Fi, wouldn't be surprised. Oh, it says that. Built-in Wi-Fi. So this is actually, if it works, going to be, you know, really quite good as far as either resale or even maybe reuse in my own house. Uh, one thing that was kind of strange, it had this glue on the front of it. And the man there at the thrift store who was stocking things noticed that and kind of chatted with me about it. He pulled off part of the glue with his fingernail. I'll pull off some more of it. Oh, it looks like it's a like a celastic type glue. It'll come off easily. We'll work on that more later. I, I haven't done any real cleaning on this, just a kind of a light wipe with a with a tissue. No big deal. But um, this looks like quite a find, so let's test it out and find out. As always in these things, uh, you're watching it live as I discover things. So I've plugged this in but haven't turned it on. We're going to turn it on and hope we see lots of lights and displays and things. Main on. Very promising. This appears to be a multi-function knob. Here's volume. Wow, this looks like a really premium unit. Now it did, didn't come with any cables or anything at all except it's got this captive antenna which I'm guessing is the Wi-Fi. It has this AM loop antenna which are not of any great interest except that I could immediately begin to hear AM through this if I hooked up speakers. Just as I did in the other stereo checkout video, I just hooked up these really cheap boombox speakers I had laying around. They have a captive cord so that's kind of the selling point for now. We're just doing a functional test. I haven't paid a lot of attention to how to hook things up but just went from front uh, left and front right as they're called here. So we should be able to turn that around and get AM going on it. I'm going to dial up AM here. See what we've got here in the way of volume. Oh, here's the tuning buttons for AM. Okay, I'm gonna go. Okay, so at a nominal checkout here, this appears to be working just fine. I see with more, I see with a little more fiddling around, we got Spotify, Bluetooth, USB, DVD, cable, Apple, whatever that is. HDMI AV1, 2, 3, audio, etc. 
and I also noticed they've got this program here which appears to be some sort of a surround sound effect role-playing game who knew that that had its own thing I haven't looked up the vintage of this yet but the fact that it has a lot of modern features including HDMI and the Wi-Fi features this audio video monitor uh, this might be from a few years ago maybe a unit like this today wouldn't have the analog uh, video at all I don't really know but um, but this is a pretty modern unit you know as I guess it might be five years old or so based on the feature set the footage that you've seen in this video so far was shot about two months ago compared to this shot as it turns out I've liked this so well that I've actually replaced my old uh, audio receiver that I've had for about 30 years and have always liked uh, with this unit I'm gonna do a deep dive into the technical features of this at some point in the future but uh, just to kind of get this video wrapped up I'll just tell you a few more things that I've learned about it in the two months since performance seems to be very good uh, I like all the features I like almost everything about it um, one annoyance is that the Bluetooth app that comes to control it is kind of lacking some of the features of a true remote control and to that end I ended up buying a third-party remote control on Amazon which has been fine uh, in retrospect I probably could have programmed some sort of universal remote control uh, the big thing was it lacked the up and down uh, menu buttons that are needed for one of the important features which we'll show you next this is a little calibration microphone that I also bought on Amazon it costs approximately $25 the way this works is you plug it into the front of the receiver with all your speakers already hooked up and makes some test tones and automatically does equalization and volume leveling for your speaker setup to give you a good surround image for whatever speakers you're using I've since found that uh, 5.1 seems to be kind of the standard there's also 7.1 one that this supports but I haven't found any content I'm interested in that uses that and honestly it seems like 5.1 gives you a very nice theater type surround image so that's probably why 7.1 has not been all that popular so I spent uh, approximately $25 on this calibration microphone and I spent $25 on the remote control and I spent six dollars on the receiver itself so that shows you uh, the economics of getting involved in thrift store products I've also since found a few other AV receivers that I've done separate videos for and already published the main thing on those is that they're slightly older than this model turns out this is actually only about two or three years old so it's not the very absolute latest but it's uh, still a very modern unit and uh, it has all the features that you would really want today the other units that I reviewed are sort of going back in different stages of time that have different features um, which really swirl around video standards that have occurred over the years so look for those other videos if you want to do a dive into vintage AV receivers Look for some more in-depth evaluation on this one in the future. I plan to show you how the calibration system works, which is similar uh, on other AV receivers of this type. I've got a Sony that also does something similar. And I'm going to do some more comparisons that have to do with uh, choosing the best speakers to use with this. In principle, the calibration system that it uses should be good enough to kind of work with any speakers that have reasonably good performance but the testing I've done with the speakers that I've got has shown that um, really you're ultimately going to need some good speakers to go with a high quality system like this and there's only so much that the 
calibration system can do. You know, it can't make bad speakers sound good, but what it can do is make good speakers sound great, maybe. So, look for that in the future. That's all we have for this video. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye. <laughs>